So today we're gonna to talk about how do we find the area of non-right triangles. And there's two formulas we're gonna learn. We'll derive even the first one, which I like to call the half sine formula, and then one called Heron's formula, which deriving, it, it's a lot more complicated, so we're probably not gonna derive that one. So let's review. From geometry, and maybe probably like sixth, seventh grade, maybe even before then, we learned that the area of a triangle is one half base times height. Now, if you forget why it's one half the base times height, you could simply recreate a rectangle with a base and height, and hopefully you know the area of a rectangle is base times height. Well, this triangle is only half of that rectangle, so it's one half the base times the height. So there's a quick refresher where that formula comes from, but when we use this, we need the base and height to be perpendicular or make a right angle with one another. Well, what happens if we have a triangle where we don't have a right angle? where I can't necessarily see the height to any base. Well, we're gonna start with a non-right triangle, okay, which is the large triangle here, ABC, and all of our, all of our work's kind of included in here already. So the, the side opposite angle A is lowercase a, the side opposite vertex B would be lowercase b, and we've drawn in kind of an altitude here, which would be a makeshift height if we called lowercase b the base, so base times height would give me the area here. Okay, so notice we've drawn in a couple other things like we've marked angle C, which we're gonna use as a reference angle in a second, but right now just focus on a big triangle here where lowercase a is opposite a, lowercase b is opposite b. Okay, so if we start off with area of a triangle, one half base times height. So if that's true here, where b and h are perpendicular, we could use that as our base and height, but let's say I wanted to use C as a reference angle, okay? So if I were labeling the sides of this smaller right triangle, the one on the right-hand side, right? Sine would be the opposite over the hypotenuse. Opposite over the hypotenuse. So sine of the angle at C is the opposite, which is H, over the hypotenuse of that right triangle, which is A. So we know this from Sokotoa, right triangle trig. Well, if you multiply both sides by A, we can get an expression that's equal to H, something we can replace H with here. So here we figured out that height is equal to A times the sine of C. So if we take this expression and substitute in for h in our formula, we get b times a times sine of c. And if we just put a and b in alphabetical order, since they're being multiplied, we get our formula. So to find the area of the original triangle, if we use this side length a and side length b for a and b, and c, which is the angle where they meet, also called the angle between them, we can find the area of a non-right triangle. So this is called the SAS side angle side case, where we know the angle between two sides. And that's exactly what these are going to be referred to. These are the two sides we know. And angle C is the angle between them. Okay, so if we know two sides and the angle between them, we can find the area of the triangle using this formula. One half times the two sides times the sine of the angle between them. Okay, so let's try a few examples with this. Example one, find the area and round to the nearest hundredth. Well, looking at our triangle, I know two sides, that's great, and the angle where they meet, the angle between them. So this is the side angle side case, which means we can use our nice new formula. So remember that area equals one half times the two sides we know times the sine of the angle between them, which in this case would be also the angle at C. So plugging in our values, A, doesn't matter which we call A and B because they're just getting multiplied together. So 10 times 12 and the sine of the angle between them. And again, you don't need to memorize these two letters necessarily A, B, sine of C, just the two sides and the sine of the angle between them. So that's enough to go to something like Desmos. Now one half 
feel free to use oops, 0.5 if you'd like, or of course you can do one half, whatever you'd like to do. 10 times 12 times the sine of the angle between them, which, there we go, 36 degrees. Make sure you're in degree mode again in your calculator. And it tells me my area, remember this is area, not a side length, is 35, and it's set to round to the nearest hundred, so two decimals out means we need to look at the third decimal place, that's seven, and round up in this case. That third digit is five or bigger, we round up. So 35.27 centimeters squared. 35.27 centimeters squared. So remember that area is measuring the square units. So please make sure that when you're writing area, you put units squared or centimeters. I even forgot to write it. So we're going to write it in right now. Centimeters squared or squared centimeters. It's how many of these centimeter squares, right, would fill up that area. Okay, let's try another example. Find the area of this one. Now note that we're, we, we don't have all the information we need here. In order to use this formula, I need two sides and the angle between them. And I don't know the angle between any of these. So what do we need? We need to find one of the angles. We need to calculate an angle. Any of them will do, um, but if we know three sides to find an angle, we're gonna need to use law of cosines from the previous lesson. Okay, so if we remember the formula to find an angle, so this was like the angle, I guess we should write measurement of angle A is equal to this, where we know all three sides. So I guess if we're following this exact one, we could find the angle at A. Call this lowercase a, lowercase b, lowercase c, kind of opposite from each one. And let's plug in the formula. The measurement of the angle at a is the inverse cosine of, we start with the side opposite a, which is 7 squared minus b squared, 9 squared, minus c squared, or 5 squared. All divided by negative 2 times b times c, 9 times 5. And that's all inside the inverse cosine. So let's go to Desmos, our calculator again. We need the inverse cosine, which is under functions. Start with a fraction, seven squared minus nine squared minus five squared over negative two, whoops, over negative two times nine times five. Okay, so our angle is about 50.70, but we'll, we'll go to one decimal place here, 50.7. Okay, so we now know one of the angles. This is about 50.7 degrees. We had to go a little bit out of our way to find it, but that's fine. But now we do know two sides and the angle between them. We can use our area formula. So one half times our two sides times the sine of the angle between them. Again, half sine formula. Don't accidentally use cosine or something here. So the two sides we're gonna use here that are around the angle we know are five and nine. So times five times nine times the sine of our angle, 50.7 degrees. I should have just written A there or C, I guess, whatever we'd wanna call it. Doesn't matter. You get the idea, I think. One half times five times nine times the sine of our angle, 50.7 degrees. Now, the best thing you can really do is have kept the previous answer there and tell it to do the sine of the previous answer. So we're not rounding early and we'll get a more accurate description. We got lucky, this was like 50.70. So rounding to the tenths place doesn't change our answer too much, but what I really should have done is taken the previous answer and just typed in answer there, ANS, or click the answer button. Anyway, tells us our area is about 17.41. That next digit out means we don't need to round up. So about 17.41 meters squared. Don't forget area is in square units. And even if they don't provide you with the units, we generally just write the generic units squared. All right. Well, obviously this could get tedious. What if I know just the three lengths and I don't wanna to have to stop and find this angle every time? 
there's another formula that's a little bit faster called Heron's formula. And in fact, if we look, here is Heron's formula. And we use Heron's when we know all three sides. We call this side, side, side. So if we know just the three sides, and we don't know any angles, we can use Heron's formula, we'll be a little bit faster. So Heron's formula uses this value called the semi-perimeter, labeled S in this equation. So to find the semi-perimeter, meaning half perimeter, you add up all the sides and divide by two. There's your half perimeter. So for our first example here, if we're doing the semi-perimeter S, we'd add up all the sides, five plus seven plus nine, and divide by two. So adding those together, we get 21 over two, or 10.5. So there's our semi-perimeter. So note that that value, S, is used four times in Heron's formula, but it's actually a pretty easy formula to memorize. It is the square root, the square root of our semi-perimeter, 10.5, times the semi-perimeter minus each side. So 10.5 minus 5, times 10.5 minus 7, and times 10.5 minus 9. Note that all of those will give you a nice positive value. So of course, we can go to our calculator and type it in. 10.5 times 10.5 minus 5 times 10.5 minus 7 times 10.5 minus 9. And of course, this is very long, lots of calculations in here, so you might want to make your Desmos wider. So make sure you didn't make any mistakes typing it in. Looks okay, and check it out. This is, by the way, the same example we just did with law of sines, and makes sense. We get the same area, 17.41 meters squared. It's about 17.41 meters squared. And I didn't have to necessarily memorize that ugly formula from law of cosines to answer this particular area problem. So we need to find the semi-perimeter or half perimeter, add up the sides and divide by two, that's pretty easy to memorize. And then it's just the square root of the semi-perimeter times the semi-perimeter minus each side. So it's actually a pretty easy formula to memorize. So here's ones to try out. See if you can find the area of number three. If you want, you can go through the you know, law of sine or half sine and find an angle first, or you can use Heron's formula. But find the area of number three and then unpause when you're finished. All right, and here is your answer. If you used Heron's formula, the semi-perimeter is nine, and plugging in nine times nine minus each side gives us about 11.62. We need it to round up there, meters squared. Don't forget, area is in meters squared. Okay, the last part of the lesson, it's just a good day to squeeze this in, is to talk about the three reciprocal trig functions. So remember, reciprocal in math means like to take a fraction, its reciprocal would be the kind of flipped upside down version, right? That would be the reciprocal of three fourths. So the reciprocal trig functions, if I took sine of an angle theta over one, its reciprocal would be one over sine, right, of the angle theta. So these reciprocal trig values also apply to what we learned about so, ka, and toa. So in fact, if sine was the opposite over hypotenuse, think so in Sokotoa, its reciprocal, which is referred to as cosecant, okay, the value, and that's what CSC is short for, cosecant, is instead the hypotenuse over opposite. So you can see the reciprocal, which is the reciprocal of sine. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, and its right triangle value it's the hypotenuse over the, hypo over the opposite. Okay, the reciprocal of cosine is something called secant, right? Which is, instead of the adjacent or a hypotenuse, it's the hypotenuse over adjacent, or of course, it's just one over cosine, the reciprocal of cosine. And tangent is, reciprocal is called cotangent, abbreviated C-O-T. So the reason this is secant, cotangent, right? We can't just use cos here because that's what we've already abbreviated cosine as, so they use cosecant, CSC for cosecant. Now, there is a good reason 
that cosecant is the reciprocal of sine and secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Uh, and that has to do with them being complementary angles. Um, so anyway, there is a good reason for that. It's not purposely backwards to be tricky, um, but just remember that cosecant goes with sine, secant goes with cosine. Uh, and then hopefully cotangent and tangent is an easy one to memorize. Okay, so we won't use these too much in this lesson, but we will in some upcoming lessons. Just a good time to throw this in here. Okay, so on this day, we're going to do some review of not only these area formulas, but also some right triangle trig applications, um, like word problems, as well as the non-right triangle stuff, law of sines and law of cosines in some realistic word problems. Okay, that's it for today's lesson. See you next time.